your sense as an investigative reporter, not as an attorney, of what it is they are looking to learn from Ivanka? I think they would ask Ivanka about things that happened before they entered the White House. You have to remember that the, the scope of these allegations goes back to 2011, 2012. Uh, and Ivanka was really involved in the company's acquisitions then. She was really involved in the company's business then. So I imagine that the, the questions she'll be asked are about the period before she entered the White House. I don't think anybody really believes she had any influence on it after that. Jill, a judge imposed a gag order on the Trump family's legal team for attacks on the judge's staff. We always come back to this moment where we have to remind ourselves just how unusual certain things are. So let's let's start with how unusual this is. And then and is this part in your mind of a strategy from the Trump team or is it simply part of the culture of being part of Trump world? It's probably some of both. First of all, it is very unusual for a gag order on a lawyer. The lawyer repeated exactly what his client had been gagged about. He deliberately, in court, said something against the judge's clerk, where that had already been discussed was not appropriate. So it's hard to imagine a lawyer who doesn't follow the rules, but that's what happened there. And so it was quite appropriate to put a gag order on the lawyers. It is unusual. It does seem to be part of the strategy aimed at the public clearly not at the court. The court is angered by this. The court is going to not appreciate it. The court has already said that Donald Trump was not credible because he had to testify about who he meant when he said, sitting next to you. And Donald Trump said, oh, I really meant Michael Cohn when he was a witness. And the judge said that simply isn't credible. If you meant Michael Cohn, you would have said Michael Cohn. And you've already said it was the person sitting next to me who's my clerk. So I don't think it's going to work, certainly not in terms of the gag order in the courtroom, but it may in the public sphere where he is really targeting his defense. Let's talk, David, just about the scope of what we're talking about here. An expert witness for the state, an experienced investment banker, says Trump's misrepresentations cost banks $168 million. How crucial is that point to the AG's case? It's quite crucial. It, one of the big questions that hangs over this case is the, who are the victims? So Trump uh, gave, allegedly, uh, gave false information or misleading information to banks. The banks then loaned him money, probably at a better rate. They gave him a better deal on the loan than they would have. And so they made, the important thing here is the banks got paid back. These banks all made money. They made millions of dollars off these loans. It's not like Trump lied about the loans and then defaulted on the loans he got because of his lies. He paid the loans back. And so this is part of establishing that there is a victim here. These banks got less money than they would have because they didn't offer Trump the deal they should have if they'd known the true state of his finances. That's why it's so important to understanding, you know, there was a victim and there was a crime. I do want to ask you, David, I, do you have expectations of the Trump testimony that we're expecting to hear this week? Yeah, I, I look back a few years ago at another case, a deposition. This was not a, a not a court case, but a similar environment where he was being asked about lies about his business. This was a, a, a suit he had filed against a, a reporter for The New York Times, alleging that the reporter had lied about Trump's worth. And so that opened Trump to all these questions about, you know, when you made this representation about your worth, were you telling the truth? And he was caught in more than 30 lies. In that situation, he would often say, you know, make these sort of bold claims, and then the lawyer would come back to him and say, look, you know, here's the proof. You're telling, you're not telling the truth. In that situation, he lost that lawsuit. He, he, he you know, he gave up on it. Uh, it will be interesting to see how it works here, but I don't expect to see Trump either refusing to answer or having, you know, a, a great command of the truth.